and Jessica East help in for Christine Persichetti. Your commute on the MTA could soon cost more. The first base fare hike for the New York City subways and buses since 2015 is on the table. But is the cost of ridership taking a toll on churchgoers? Some are saying it's not the time to raise prices. Deacon Ron Rizzuto's morning commute. He takes a short walk from his home on Staten Island to the bus. It lets him off in Bay Ridge, where he hops on the train to J Street in downtown Brooklyn. And then another short walk to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James, where he's the pastoral associate and business manager. He does this five days a week. Some days it's pretty simple. Others, it's anything but. It would be quick easy and it didn't cost all that much, especially growing up. But Deacon Ron says he's seen the rise and fall of the MTA. At one point it was really dirty, but crime, oof. I know they say crime has dropped. Yeah, but how high was it? Next month, the MTA will be voting on a proposed fare hike for subways and buses from 275 to 290. It would be the first increase since 2019 and the first to base fare since 2015. But that's not the only increase happening on mass transit. Whereas robbery and grand larceny dropped during the first quarter of 2023, felony assaults are more frequent. There were 132 during that period. Just to ride mass transit, you shouldn't take your life in your hands. You wanna feel safe and it makes you think twice, like, oh boy, should I go down there or not? On the subway, ridership is at just 70% of where it was pre-pandemic, but fare evasion is at an all-time high. Turnstile jumpers cost the MTA nearly $700 million in 2022. They just walk right on the bus. Nobody says anything or hop over the turnstile. It's affected daily mass attendance at St. James. Parishioners who are commuters come less because of the cost, but also the hassles of getting here on the mass transit these days. Some people are living day to day and they can't get around. Uh, we have many people here at St. James Cathedral uh, who are who fit that bill. The fare increase is expected to generate more than $300 million a year in revenue. If approved, it could go into effect by Labor Day. So what does that mean for subway and bus commuters? A ride on either would go from 275 to 290. Weekly Metro cards increase from $33 to $34. The cost of a 30 day Metro card would go from $127 to $132. Express bus fare would increase a quarter to $7. In addition, weekly and monthly Long Island Railroad and Metro North passes are expected to see a 4.3% increase. Developing tonight, some great news from the Vatican, an update to Pope Francis's health. The Holy Father is coming home. He's expected to be released from the hospital tomorrow morning. The news comes as we finally get our first images of the Holy Father after he underwent hernia surgery last week. The Pope visited patients in the pediatric cancer and children's neurosurgery wards of Gemelli. According to doctors, the pontiff's recovery has been going well since the operation on June 7th. He has been sleeping through the night and his blood tests are normal. The Vatican has canceled all of the Pope's public events until June 18th. The Holy Father will be released on the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The devotion first began in the 12th century and became popular after Jesus revealed his Sacred Heart to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque in the 1670s. Ahead of the solemnity, the Bishop of Brooklyn, Robert Brennan, delivered this message to the faithful. Tomorrow we celebrate the solemn Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It's a day really to focus in on the amazing love that Jesus has for each one of us, on his humanity and on the depths of his love, how he calls us to draw close. Come to me, he says, all you who labor and who are burdened, and I will give you rest. It's also a day for prayer for the sanctification of priests. Please pray for our priest. They're holy men who really long to serve you with all their hearts, but we all need help along the way. We need the prayers and we need to draw closer always to Jesus Christ. Pray especially for those who are struggling, for those who are ill. And if I may be so bold, would you pray for me as well? Pray for me that I might serve you with the heart of Christ, the Good Shepherd, with the sacred heart of Jesus, that more and more we can all draw closer to him in love, he who loves us. 
God bless you and have a wonderful day. The Feast of the Sacred Heart normally falls on a Friday, 19 days after Pentecost. On Wednesday, Bishop Brennan celebrated Mass for those who helped serve the people of Brooklyn, police officers from Brooklyn South. The Memorial Mass at Our Lady of Guadalupe honored those who lost their lives in the line of duty. Patrolman James P. Collins. The names of 132 men and women were read aloud during the mass. That's just officers who died serving the southern part of Brooklyn. According to the FBI, the number of police officers killed in the line of duty is up by nearly 60 percent. That's the sharpest increase since record keeping began in 1960. Over in Canarsie, the NYPD joined forces with the Catholic Academy for a day of fun. The field day at Our Lady of Trust was full of games and prizes enjoyed by kids and adults alike. This is the first time the school and the 69th precinct have teamed up for the event, but they're hoping to make it an annual gathering. A group of students are offering a sweet summer treat for a good cause. <laughs> Third graders from St. Savior Catholic Academy in Park Slope serving refreshing glasses of lemonade. The money earned from every cup is going to the Timothy P. Klein Foundation. The Brooklyn firefighter died in April of 2022 while battling a three alarm fire. Klein's girlfriend, who organized the event and is a teacher at St. Savior, says the stand helps to keep his memory alive and shows students how they can be more like him. It helps my students realize what kind of person Tim was and how they could aspire to be him one day because he really was always looking for ways to help whether he was at work whether he was not at work um, he was a very humble person and so we talked about some of his character traits and how they could embody him in different ways and how they could show that they could be courageous that they could be humble and they could be kind and helping at all times at any time of the day one of the ways the Klein Foundation plans to use the lemonade stand money is for a scholarship fund for Diocese of Brooklyn students. And finally tonight, let's see if you're smarter than some of Jeopardy's latest contestants. On Tuesday night, they were given this question. Matthew 6, 9 says, Our Father which art in heaven, this be thy name. A pretty easy one, right? Well, the contestants were stumped and no one was able to give the right answer. You might call this a biblical fail. Of course, I'm sure you all know the question was, what is hallowed? That is this Currents News update. I'm Jessica East Hope. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.